you're watching Press TV tab now for the news review section. New reports emerging of the U.S. role in northeastern Syria. American forces have transferred 750 Daesh terrorists, most of them foreigners, from a prison in Hasaka province. Russian media are quoting special sources as saying that the detainees have been transferred to a desert in Deir al Zor province. They say U.S. coalition drones performed monitoring operations to secure their exit routes until they arrived at their destination near the town of Bukema. Sources say the transfer process took place in batches by SUVs and buses. A number of top Daesh leaders, holding Arab, Belgian, and Dutch nationalities, were among the SKPs. Last week, Daesh attacked the detention center. Heavy fighting then ensued. Kurdish led forces, who are allies of the U.S., are fighting the Syrian government, and they are running the prison. Syria's UN envoy has blamed Washington for the clashes. Bassam Sabak says that the U.S. is seeking to recycle Daesh and justify American military presence in Syria. Now, to get some insight into that story, let me invite a couple of guests. We'll have our correspondent in Damascus, Mohammed Ali, joining us. Also, Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, is joining us out of Sydney. Good to see you, gentlemen. Well, let's first go to Damascus. Uh, Mohammed, uh, give us some more information on what uh, we hear in news reports regarding this transfer of Daesh forces by U.S. Yes, Russian media reported that uh, the United States transported uh, 750 uh, Daesh uh, terrorists from Hasake to the countryside of uh, Deir al-Zor, uh, mainly around uh, Albu Kamal on the borderline between Syria and Iraq and to uh, area uh, uh, near Al-Bishri uh, mountain, also in Deir al-Zor's southern countryside. Now, according to uh, reports, even the so-called Syria's Democratic Forces, uh, which works with the United States for, uh, over there, uh, forces on the ground in Al Hasake uh, retreated uh, from uh, three positions around the Guiran prison, which Daesh attacked a week ago, and allowed terrorists to escape from that from those three positions towards two areas in Al Hasake where they gathered. Then the SDF helped them to uh, uh, get out uh, and reach those areas in Deir al-Zor countryside. According to those reports by Russian media, also the U.S.-led coalition reconnaissance drones uh, helped those Daesh terrorists and directed them to use a special uh, routes uh, over there in that desert of Deir al-Zor to reach those areas. Now, this is definitely not the first time that uh, cooperation between Daesh and uh, the United States in that area of Syria is uh, reported. Uh, uh, Russia uh, said it many times that even the United States uh, is training directly those terrorists of Daesh in its uh, uh, illegal base of al Tanf on the borderline between Syria and Iraq. And also the Syrian government, always officials, know to that uh, uh, support of the United States to Daesh. And it says always that uh, the United States wants to help Daesh to keep control in some areas in order to use that as a pretext to stay occupying Syria. Okay. Now we have a clear picture. Now, let me ask uh, Tim Anderson about what the U.S. is exactly is doing in Syria. We had that prison attack where, you know, uh, Daesh inmates, uh, some of them were able to flee. And then uh, now we have uh, the U.S. moving these uh, 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 terrorists. Maybe they call them good terrorists. I don't know. Every, now and then, you know, uh, definitions change. Good terrorists, bad terrorists, modern ones. So what's the U.S. exactly doing in Syria? Well, Daesh has always been a creature of the U.S. to try and destabilize uh, Syria and Iraq. It was created first in Iraq uh, back in 2004, 2005, then exported to Syria in 2012. And there have been constant reports of U.S. direct collaboration with Daesh in Syria and Iraq through from Syrian, Iraqi and Iranian sources since 2014. Now, more recently, um, there were Syrian television reports of Daesh uh, terrorists who were captured by the Syrians and confessed they'd come from the U.S. base in Al Tanaf to attack the, the Syrian army in Palmyra and the T-4 air base. Uh, uh, three months ago, there was a, a report of a number of Daesh families moved across to Iraq. Um, so there are these constant reports. And the latest one, of course, is significant in that a large number of fighters have been moved down to the one border post uh, in the border between Iraq and Syria, which is controlled 
by Iraq and Syria. So the US has been uh, launching missile attacks on that base for a long time. And also the bombing in Al Bagus was, was uh, two, two years ago was linked to that too. So the latest thing is another step in a, in a series of constant uh, collaborations, which the US has tried to keep hidden, but clear direct collaborations with Daesh to try and uh, keep destabilizing Syria and Iraq and to keep the two countries apart. Okay, I mean, uh, Tim, how can the U.S. say that? Because as you said, they were the ones who created groups like Daesh, and that's what Donald Trump uh, alluded to, you know, Hillary Clinton and others uh, during the Obama era. And now, and then they launch the so-called war on terror. They fight the, uh, what they call terrorists in some parts of the world, and then they go on in broad daylight, support them, and they're doing what they're doing now in Syria. It's a larger scale of what's called a protection racket in U.S. terms. Basically, they they demand that they be paid um, to for protection, basically. And of course, they're claiming their presence in Iraq and Syria to this day is to fight Daesh. When from the Syrian and Iraqi and Iranian sources, we know has been the relationship has been one of constant collaboration. So uh, the problem is, of course, that. In the propaganda war stakes, the U.S. media will never admit this. They never acknowledge this at all. Even when the massacre in Al Bagus was uh, revealed by the New York Times um, some months ago, they claimed it was in the middle of uh, the fog of war fighting ISIS in uh, in that same part of uh, Syria that these 750 terrorists have now been sent to around the Al Bukamal border crossing. Right. Now, let me ask Mohammed Ali uh, about the Damascus government's uh, posture regarding this, because I don't uh, think that Damascus wants the U.S. forces to remain on Syrian soil. Yes, for sure. The uh, Syrian officials always stress that the presence of the U.S. forces in Syria is illegal. It is occupation of Syrian uh, of Syrian land, and this is not something new. Uh, the Syrian government knows very well that there is a direct support uh, by the United States to uh, those terrorists of uh, Daesh. For example, this time when they transported the 750 terrorists, where did they take them? They actually uh, took them to uh, an area called Al Bukamal, around Al Bukamal. Al Bukamal is an area controlled by the Syrian army and its allies. So this the United United States is literally sending those troops as if they work for them to fight the Syrian army. What the United States is doing is that it's actually portraying to the international community that it is fighting the terrorists Daesh terrorists and its presence is for this purpose in Syria. But uh, on the ground, what it's doing, it's directly supporting them in order to give itself a pretext to continue occupying uh, Syria. Since 2014, when the U.S. led coalition started intervening in Syria, and up till this moment, we never saw any defeat of Daesh in areas that the uh, U.S. led coalition operates. All we saw was destruction by the U.S. led coalition attacks to the infrastructure of the uh, Syrian territories, whether in Al Raqqa or in areas in the north in the northeast we saw the killing of uh, thousands of civilians uh, because of such attacks by the u.s led the coalition and we're seeing the smuggling and the looting of uh, syria's national resources the oil from syria to iraq with the help of the so-called syria's democratic forces so definitely the syrian government does know about uh, what the united states is doing inside syria however it has been always calling on the uh, united nations security council to take some kind of action or effort in order to stop such an occupation However, up till this moment, we're still seeing silence, international silence over such an occupation because the United States is in Syria without a UN mandate, without the approval of the Syrian government. Thus, it is actually occupying Syria, destroying it, and also uh, trying to uh, uh, loot its national resources. Right. Now, now Tim, speaking of uh, Syrian oil, we remember pre former President Trump saying that uh, we have done enough, uh, we have defeated Daesh, let others take uh, care of uh, you know, the rest. But the U.S. forces did stay in Iraq in order to, what the U.S. officials call, to secure the oil there. Now, how much longer do, do you believe, and this is uh, what the, the Damascus government is opposed to strongly, as Muhammad Ali just rightfully put it. So how much longer uh, do you think the U.S. will stay in Syria? Will it ever leave Syria? Yes, I believe it will. And it's a question of months, probably. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> the Biden administration had been in talks with the Russians late last year um, about the future of the SDF, their other proxy, the one that they substituted for Daesh effectively, but which has helped them control and release from time to time different groups of, of Daesh terrorists. They, they, of course, know that that um, Kurdish-led group is going to collapse completely when the US withdraws. 
And of course, the US has already committed itself to withdrawing what they call combat troops from Iraq. So those two occupations are very closely linked. And the US is trying, in my view, is trying to find a way out, just as Trump tried to find a way out, um, but facing the problem of how bad they're going to look when they do it. And I suppose one way of reading the uh, the dispersion of more uh, Daesh terrorists is to say that, look, you know, when we're no longer there, um, uh, Daesh uh, is, there's an outbreak of Daesh with, without the US there to suppress them. They'll try and run that line, I think, on their gullible uh, press, which after all uh, writes pretty much anything that they want them to write. Okay, I appreciate your contribution. Mohamed Ali, our correspondent in Damascus, Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies in Sydney. Thank you for watching this edition of the News Review.